if you look at my calendar, I don't have anything booked past three weeks. Yeah. Nothing. It's about average. Right. Yeah, it's me Nothing too. booked. Yet I've been like that for the past eight years. That's scary stuff. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the I Filmmaker Podcast. My name's Ariel Martinez. Big Magic Harry Mike is with us. That's right. And I'm, I'm working my sexy like South Beach outfit today. So now I'm the one dressing all black. Yeah, we just And swapped. you just went the other way around. Yeah, huh? man, I'm having fun. You didn't get the memo. This is great, man. This is this is fun. <laughs> have you been? Good. Good. Been really good, yeah. I'm excited what? about today's topic because I have nothing to say towards it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think today's going to be a good episode. Yeah. So today we're going to assess. I've had... Um, and I, I actually don't know, I don't know how often time, how often this comes up in your mind mm -hmm. or in freelancers mind in general of how their self-assessment in their business, mm -hmm. in the industry, how do you assess that? Is there even, I personally don't think there's a right or wrong way to assess it, but there are maybe some indicators that might point in you in a different direction of maybe this is not for you mm -hmm. so i wanted to discuss some yeah. of those things i guess what i would um speak to that is like first off like right off the bat if you're losing full passion for what you're doing like you're not excited about it at all but how do you assess that the lack of wanting to do it <laughs> if you are you saying that there are no and i'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here are you saying that there have never been a job that you've never wanted that you didn't want to do yesterday? You should have <laughs> talked to my wife about my job yesterday. Uh, I was, I was pretty much moping around the house to leave and like milking every possible second. It got so bad. Okay. And it's a retainer gig. So you don't, you don't feel, uh, I see, I see. you don't feel the, the immediate, you know, yeah. here's the reward, financial yeah, yeah, reward yeah. for what you're doing. Um, so I'm, I got so bad. I was exhausted from the, the previous shoot. It was like a 14 hour day. And so this one was like one of those uh, shoots <laughs> and it's not even complicated. It's, not, it's nothing. I had no reason for this, but I just wasn't in it that day. Oh man. And um, so I'm milking everything I could possibly do to just wait to the last second to close and, and gear and our batteries, everything. And finally I texted even a friend of mine who was like, Hey, if you ever need help with anything, you know, I'll come out for free. And I'm like, I'm thinking about that guy right now. And I'm like, I could really use that guy today. <laughs> oh so gosh. I text him, hey, bro, any chance, you know, you could swing by and, you know, whatever, help yeah, me out yeah. if you want, whatever. And I, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm nice about it, whatever you want. And he yeah. ends up texting me. He's like, yeah, I could be there maybe like about 50 minutes after you start. And I'm like, all right, cool. Any help I can get for Teardown. I'm just not into it today. So um, this is a retainer gig and they have all the gear and it's even at the location. So all I got to do is move it from upstairs to downstairs. By the time I'm finished doing that with, what is it like five pelican cases c stands everything by myself no help i'm sweating i was already not into the shoot right oh man so i'm like okay here we go i'm start setting everything up i even did a little post hey i'm here you know setting this up it's so <laughs> great that. yeah yeah well <laughs> the main guy comes down he's like hey uh change of plans we're not gonna do any of this we're gonna do the very simple shoot which is fine because it's a simpler shoot not more you know yeah but i'm just like man I did all this by myself. My oh, friend that I'd said that was going to come, he's still not there yet. And so I'm like, oh, just to make matters worse. So then I have to kind of just tear everything down, go set up in a different location. It's not a hard setup, but it was, it's one of those things. Like it's, it's work, it's production. It is yeah, what it is. Yeah, but yeah. when it's on a day where you're just like, it's a retainer job and you're just like, you know, it's just hard. And so I'm not saying that like, that's the lack of passions. I think we're all allowed to have those days where yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but on a big shoot, you kind of, you don't have the freedom to not want to work on big shoots where it's like, it's a lot on the, on the table. Um, I think you, you got to bring your A game every time. This is one of those shoots. It's very simple. So there's this not a, a wash, rinse, repeat yeah, it's, type of deal. Exactly. So there's room for a little bit of like, oh, I don't want to go, but you still got to go. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say that that's the lack of passion right. that I'm talking about. So I'm talking about if you're just finding, if you're just finding zero passion in like learning, finding zero passion in looking for work or contacting people, or you're just starting to just hate your career choice, maybe it's the time you look for something else. So I would say I've done passion projects, right? I've done passion projects that even till this day, gets me work in the sense that I'm able to showcase that to potential clients and they love it. And that's what they hire me off of like that kind of stuff. 
so they want the same style mm. they want all that you know that's great and i'm able to to and, and i'm super happy that i've been able to take that route but i wouldn't even assess it by that i would assess it because here there's a there's a couple of factors where people can consider if this is for them or not right passion absolutely has to be a must but it it would showcase in how much you learn right the reason why passion matters is because it would showcase how much you learn then how much you learn showcases the quality that you're delivering because you're learning so much mm -hmm. right um till this day um it's and I, I don't want this to come across as very high and mighty, but I'm not learning at the rate that I was learning back when I first started, mm -hmm. right? When I first started, everything was new to me, mm -hmm. everything. And so exciting. everything I was observing, yeah. uh, everybody working, I was absorbing a lot of stuff, not at the rate that I do now. And mm -hmm. that's not because I lost passion. It's because I've already heard that and seen that before, yeah. you yeah. know, but anytime the opportunity comes where I learn something that I had not heard before. I'm again, it's like yeah. I started all over again, you know, so it's great yeah. that drives me. I'm like, oh, my God. Yes, I love this. So learning new techniques, all that stuff is 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 I love that. So that is sort of what drives me. That's the passion that would drive you. Mm -hmm. Now, there's the business side of things, too. Mm -hmm. Right. So passion, I would say, is what is what's going to get you there, but it's not what's going to keep you there Doesn't sustain you because you could be passionate about this. Mm -hmm. But you really, there's going to be a certain point where you have to transition where like, so for example, um, there's people that go to film school, right? And they could be passionate about mm -hmm. like Chris, Chris is passionate about narratives, mm -hmm. right? He loves that stuff. But how many opportunities out are out there for narrative to, to make a living off of doing that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure they, that there are. Mm -hmm. but everybody wants to do that right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you start making the big bucks what when you get to hollywood or whatever to make these really big movies until then you have to do video production work you have to do commercial work there's there's companies that are paying for that stuff mm -hmm. right you got to pay the bills yeah so maybe i would say i would say you know depending there has to be some sort of year to income ratio mm -hmm. where the 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 nor the a number of years should be reached and i don't know what this number is whether it's two three four whatever it is mm -hmm. and if your income is still the same at year five that it was on year one maybe start maybe your practices are mm -hmm. what, what what are we looking at here you know mm -hmm. are you still pushing as hard as you were i think that the range really should always start out what's your five-year plan right and that's a, that's in any business like write out your five-year plan and if you're nowhere near, if you're still in like where you were in one on, on five, something needs to change if you're going to stick with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I feel like a parent where yeah. it's like your child is like just choosing to do the same thing that's hurting mm -hmm. them. It's like you want you want to say give up on it and go a different route that's more secure. Sure. But in this industry, I don't want to necessarily say that, but something has to shift. Something needs to change. And I think sometimes we get so trapped in our passion mm -hmm. or something that we aspire to be that we can't keep. So like, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. So when I was a full-time video editor at a company and I decided to start my own business in something that has nothing to do with literally nothing to do with this. And it was, um, sales. Now I thought, I thought I was pretty good in sales because I sold my wife on me. Hello. All right. <laughs> so, um, so Sorry. I got into sales and, um, selling a, a product, you know, like a service, selling a service that yeah. I don't provide. It's the whole big thing. And I, and I pushed it and I pushed it hard to be honest. And I made some money, but it was very inconsistent. It got to the point where like my family and almost friends even got to the point where they're like, all right, how long are you going to let keep riding this train that is not going to get you where you want according to the facts of what you've produced? Not because we don't believe in you or we don't think you're capable of, but let's take a, let's take an inventory, you know, mm -hmm. inspect what you expect and take inventory of where you're at today and make quality decisions. And I feel like sometimes, and this sounds harsh, but take your, remove yourself away from the the passion of it or what mm -hmm, your goals are mm -hmm. step outside as if you're someone else looking at your finances and where you're going and have a more broad view of, of what this is really like and take a reality check and then go okay 
So if I'm still in year one from year five, either if I'm going to commit and choose mm-hmm. commit, something drastically needs to change. I need to invest in myself. I need to do the things I've never thought possible mm-hmm. and pretend it's like a video game and you're going to hit reset and you know it's okay to take the major risks and then just, you know, the reset's not there, but you've taken major risks. All you can do is win from that and then go forward from there. But something has to change. Either you quit and get a, a steady job. Or that's not, I'm, we're not, even though we're business owners, I'm not against a steady income, a steady job. It's for everybody. There's be, Being a business-minded person isn't for everyone. It could be for many people. But something, I think, for me, year five, I agree with what you're saying, year five. Year five for me is every five years taking evaluation. Where, where are you going? Where are you at? But what are the, what's in the books? Because sometimes mm-hmm. we, we want to, we don't want to, we don't want to admit the truth because mm-hmm. we don't want to look at the numbers. Yeah, that's something that's extraordinarily important is your numbers, right? And um, and I'll be honest, I started, I've said this before in a podcast, when I started my business, I did not have a business mentality. I loved video. I did it for years for my church for a long time until one of my best friends told, said you should do it for a business. It never had it occurred to me. Um, I spoke to my pastor. He gave me the blessing and I ran with that. Right. At the time I was still living with my parents, so I didn't have much Mm -hmm. expenses. Like I I was able to be uh, risky like that. A little Uh, bit of a safety net. Right. That was definitely a safety net. And it was, I, I was subject to whatever I knew the connections that I had, which weren't much at all, you know? It was a friend of mine from church that knew somebody that had a business that was looking to edit these videos. And that was my first job ever. Right. It was like seven videos that I had to edit each of them, like three minutes long each. And it was a total of like $500 Mm. for the whole project. Right. Mm. Uh, We take jobs like that all the time. when We're starting. I'm starting. So, uh, but I always had, you know, business people at my church that I can always ask questions to, you know, it's great. And these are things that you have to do. Uh, when you're starting a business and really with anything, you know, if there's people that are more skilled than you humble yourself and go ask, go ask questions. Cause they yeah. might, they, so here's the thing, the advice that they gave me, not always did it pertain to me. Cause sometimes my, my industry is very different, but it opens up different avenues of, or a train of thought that I did not think about before mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. factors and variables that I didn't even perceive before, you know? So that in that way it helped out a lot so anyways it helped me grow tremendously you know and obviously it's it was in 2013 so it's eight years now into that um and it's it's been great it's been i obviously i know a lot more now than what i did back then Mm -hmm. there is a risk that comes with being a freelancer that not everybody can afford to have right my example if you look at my calendar, I don't have anything booked past three weeks. Yeah. Nothing. It's about average. Right. Yeah, it's me Nothing too. booked. Yet I've been like that yeah. for the past eight years. <laughs> See. That's scary stuff. Some people, my dad would look at that and want to commit suicide. He'd oh, like, yeah. There's, there, there's no security here. That's like, not for ah! any. Like, that's his reaction. No, I've told my dad, like, hey, this is <laughs> this is what I've got. And um, I have nothing past three weeks. And... Honestly, have no leads, have no nothing, but <laughs> but the last three months has been like that, and it's been packed. I mean, by God's grace, you right? Know? Yeah. But it's been packed. But he goes, Mike, how do you live like that? You have a <laughs> three year old, yeah. you have a wife, you have a family. I'm like, well, first off, God's providing, and second, you know, I'm just I'm committed to this, yeah. and I just have to trust that it's gonna work out. But yeah. it's, he's like, I could not function like that. He goes, I need consistency. It's funny because it goes a lot into our faith, right? We we walk by faith not in by the sight. industry that we're in. Um, a lot of people that are not Christians, they would call it something else, whatever yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. But that's literally how we have to walk to keep our sanity. Yeah. Because people will go crazy if yes. nothing comes up. Yeah. You know. It is a scary time, though. I've had that happen. I've um, so my worst case scenario. Um, this is, I don't know, year maybe three, year uh-huh. four, somewhere around there. Yeah. I had one month. Um, I made ten thousand dollars in a month. That's right. a lot. I mean, pff, you're probably way past that, but hey, that's, for me, I'm like yeah, yeah, ten thousand in one month. That was, yeah. I think, the first time it happened to yeah, me, yeah. and I was like, 
holy grail. Like, I'm in the right place. This is it. <laughs> Woo! This book of vacation, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The next month, I made $300. Whoa! For the entire month. Whoa. Okay. So, I think another topic in this sure. discussion is budgeting. Because oh, yes. we can go through feasts. That's a or hard famine. lesson that everybody has to learn. It's a really hard one. I had to learn the hard way as well. I was like, maybe I should not have spent that money yeah. that yeah. <laughs> that it's I true. that I from that month that I had really good and went and bought a bunch of stuff. Because now I'm tight. I'm like, oh man. Here's the problem in the um, in the uh, corporate production or, or studio like studio work yeah. with working with clients or like products and stuff like sure, that. Sure, sure. Is that at the end of the year, like. November, December, uh -huh. you're fully booked. And it's not for Christmas stuff. It's like for the next year, right? Yeah. Why? Because they they have to spend the annual budget. Come January, Holy February, cow. all those March, payments coming April, in. Bro, there's no work sometimes yeah. because the They're clients, done. the client, the corporate clients are revamping what is their budget for the year. By the time they get to the studio, because I wasn't in charge, they weren't my clients. I was just part of the production. Sure, sure. By the time it gets to the studio landing a new creative project, it would be January, February, March, maybe April. Yeah. And it's like, so January, February, March, if that's your only niche, you've, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta budget off of what you made in the last part of the year. Um, and I experienced that for like six years straight and I had to get used to that. So I had to be very careful on my Christmas budget. My wife was like, yeah, but we want this, this, we have, you know, you look at the bank account yeah. and you're like, yeah, it's very easy to do. Let's that. do it. You know, we can. Um, but I have to just remind her, hey, listen, you know, keep in mind, yeah. uh, my income is 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 fluid. It fluctuates yeah. a lot. And that's something that you have to consider when buying stuff. That's yeah. something that I overlook all the time. <laughs> I, I make so many <laughs> impulsive purchases. It, it it definitely gets me in trouble sometimes. Um, but anyways, so like you said, knowing your numbers, looking at your books, right? If you're in year two or three, you should see an increase every single year, right? The good thing is that you're making clients. You're making clients and those. I still have clients from year one. That I work with, That's right? Great. Uh, every now and then, They'll, even if it's once a year, they still call me. That's great. Right. Um, my prices are completely different, but. They they still call me, but, but they've probably they've probably grown as well in all those. Oh, one hundred percent, they've grown. Or check this out. One thing that happens to me is my low my smaller clients have referred me, and now those referrals have turned into some of my biggest clients. Wow! And that came from a small client, you know. Um, you, you never know, know when that's gonna come. You know, here's a tip I would give for if if you're in year one, two, and three. And you're seeing a, a slump. You know, a lot of network marketers do this, but it works really good in, in traditional business. Go to all of your friends and family and find out from them who are employed in different corporate companies. Get a list. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Make things happen for yourself. Mm -hmm. Get a list out. Start writing. Sit down with them and be like, who, could, who do you think could possibly need a video? Who could possibly need some photography? Um, some editing work who works at what what places get a list and literally create a, a list of 40 people you can do that we all could do that even right now we could mm -hmm. do that right now mm -hmm. if, if there's a slump and even if there isn't and i guarantee you if you contact every single one of them and make them just aware that this is what you do and that you can provide something for their employer you'd be surprised where it may not even be them mm -hmm. it's through that person who gives you a different referral and there's just so many avenues and don't be afraid of free work man Correct. Yeah. I even today I just finished a video for a buddy of mine. He wanted some video and he was seeing some prices and it was almost at his budget and whatnot. But I said, look, don't worry about it. Let me do this. But this was at the time where I had recently purchased the FX9 and some new lighting tubes and some a bunch of new stuff. Things you could test. Right. So yeah. I'm like, hey, dude, let me do this. Let me make a video for you on me. No, no charge. I want to do this so that I can showcase my stuff. I want to take some nice behind the scenes stuff. I want okay. to yeah. put this out as a, as a test for all the new gear that I have. Did you, you make know? kind of like a, a verbal agreement that you have some creative freedom that maybe you wouldn't I have add? all creative freedom. Perfect. See, that's, that's great. Like it's do something for free. You're going to get all this stuff in return. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had all creative freedom. You know I'm when, not charging you a thing. You have well, no way to mm -hmm. 
make any demands here. A great idea. At too. the same time, he told me, "Hey, I was hoping I can get this." I'm like, "All right, cool. I'll make that for you. Not a problem." You Beautiful. Know? That's great. Not a problem. Yeah. Another yeah. great idea is even come out of pocket and pay someone to come and just do your BTS video and photography. I was I was gonna. I didn't end up doing it, but yes, I did consider that for yeah. somebody to come out and do a, an actual BTS video. Yeah, yeah, it helps. And I've done that before. Because we're in the world of self promotion. You know, oh, the yeah. reality is we have to kind of self promote. Yeah. yeah. How do you use social media? Oh, don't even go there, bro. I'm the worst at it. You're I'm bad nothing at it. like you, bro. Nothing like you. Um, so my my mentality in social media is just remind people. I I I'm not a big fan of when people post uh whatever a camera or whatever, and they say if you need video services, call me. Yeah, no. I'm not a fan of that. No, me either. Of that method or that technique. I'm not dogging on anybody that does that. Hey, mm -hmm. do whatever you think works for you. In my opinion. I think it's a given that if they see a camera, you're kind of sort of related into that world and they know how to contact you, yeah. right? I'm just more of a, let's keep reminding everybody that this is what you do. It's funny you say that because uh, in the last just two weeks, I've been posting a little bit more in stories and and I just got a, two messages from friends of mine yeah. um, saying, wow, you have been so busy. And you seem to do so many fun things. That stays in their mind. Yes. And and they were saying, you're working with some really cool people. Mm -hmm. Whose house was that? How was it like working with this person? And <clears throat> and the conversation is, is, is arising because yeah. I started posting more. Now yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not that great with social, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I started posting more stories <laughs> and I'm seeing a reaction from people and that could that could turn yeah. into potential work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They'll remember that. Be like, hey, look, I'm busy. Yeah. One of the, one of the, now it's turning into one of my bigger clients that I've been working with for like the past four years, four or five years. Um, I had them as a client before this person got, it's funny, I had them as a client before this person got on board with them. But, you know, this is somebody that I, I used to go to high school with. Mm. And she reached out to me about possibly doing videos for the agency. Wow. But she didn't know that I had already been doing videos yeah. with, for them, which That's is hilarious. Awesome. But assume that I wasn't, Yeah. right? Assume that I wasn't. Um, she would have still reached out to me to do that video because she just sees that I've been posting a lot about cameras and stuff. This is somebody from high school. Wow. I'm Look 32 years old. High school was long time ago, 2007. Wow. So that is something that would have been a potential client. You know, it was already a client, but you get the idea, yeah, right? But you're showing yourself alive in this industry. So people know that you're, right. you're working, you know, that you do. I had like another this. recent high school guy that came to visit me. He turned into a politician. And started this foundation and his foundation needed video. And he's been loving the stuff that I've been posting. He sees that it's high quality, top notch stuff. And he wants to sort of, he needs video for his stuff. So we got into a meeting. We're able to work something out. We got another client there. You know, it's just reminding people that this is what you do. So I'm realizing something in what you're saying. And I kind of feel bad about my life right now. <laughs> I was, a, I didn't, I didn't go to high school. I was homeschooled. Oh, so man. all of that warm market potential work now is killing me. <laughs> I'm going to redo. I'm going to ask God to just redo my life and go to high school just for future clients. No, man. But <laughs> look, the people you have currently, man. Yeah, there's so and many I options. I recommend people use hashtags. Yeah. Hashtag that, do you, that do you get a lot of response from that? I feel like I get a bunch of bots and a bunch of stuff. No, is that the, the, what the hashtags do is optimize the amount of eyes that see your post. So anybody yeah. that just searches the hashtag video production. Mm -hmm. your post will be in the mix. Well, I have noticed that when I do something like that, I go to the hashtag and I just take a quick little yeah. stroll. And you'll see your post right and, there. And I'll, but not only me, I'm talking about like anything else in that genre. So that's a that's a good point of view yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's definitely really good to, yeah. to do I just that. always seem to get a, a million, not a million obviously, but I get a lot of likes from just these counts that just look bougie. Bougie. <laughs> <laughs> I had a buddy of mine that, he did a lot of work, whatever. Uh, this is early, early in my career. And he did mostly like anime After Effects stuff. He had a passion to do narrative stuff and whatnot. He got a job with this company that does a lot of soccer broadcasting. And next thing I know, he's selling all his equipment, right? Mm. Now, I've sold my equipment too, but it was to upgrade. Yeah. And then when I asked him, hey, what, are you upgrading? Are you you know, why are you selling your stuff? Like, he said he doesn't need it anymore. That's when I realized, oh, man, this guy just threw in the towel. Yeah. He's happy with his full-time job. 
you know? Um, and it's not the same thing being a freelancer and working in the industry for another company as a full-time person. It's There's a same. difference. It's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. Um, you really don't have that freedom. Is this full-time also in the in, in the industry? He does the graphic stuff oh, so, for okay. these broadcasts, for these soccer oh. broadcasts. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. It's in the industry, but it's not being a right contractor freelancer. It's right. It's he definitely yeah. not as a contractor. He's an employee, right? Um, I took that, in my opinion, I took that as him throwing in the towel as mm -hmm. maybe freelancing world life is not for him. Would you agree it's not for everyone? It's not. I don't think so. Because here's the thing. You have to hustle. But see, my hustle was so enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And it still is. I'll still come in, stay as late as I need to. I'll come in Saturdays and Sundays to even... These days, I come in Saturdays and Sundays. I'm editing. I love this stuff. And no one's going to outwork me mm -hmm. in my own business, mm -hmm. right? I don't care who I have there. I'm going to cater to my clients and continue to serve. If I have to go back to working how I used to, and what I mean by that is everything. My, the sets that, that you, you've been on my sets all the time, I would do the same exact thing if I was by myself, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I would set up all the lights. I would set up all the booms. I'd move the lights according. I would move the camera according. Obviously, sometimes there are some things that I just cannot do because of lack of time. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, till you, wait till you have kids. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> you have to like... No, I mean like on set. <laughs> like on set. Like if I have to wake up at five in the morning, get set up, go to a shoot, come back, prep and put everything back to charge again for the next day. And then I have those seasons just like that. Nothing has changed. That's great. The only thing that's changed is I charge a lot more now mm -hmm. so that I can get more help mm -hmm. to continue to work that way. Again, the hustle was so enjoyable for me. I loved it. And one thing I've always said, I would come home from a long day shooting. I don't care what production it was, whether I had a good time or a bad time. Man, I had the biggest smile on my face because I love what I do, you know. And then to top it all off, the freedom that you have. You know, the freedom that you get when working as a freelancer. Of course, listen, if you're married with kids and you're the only source of income, you have to consider that if you're trying to make a decision to take that dive, mm -hmm. um, the responsibilities and your priorities. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't able to, I started my business in 2013. I moved out of my house in 20, for the first time in 2018, right? Mm -hmm. It's five years five years that I had to really hustle, right? To build something. And yeah. to build something where I felt that it was sustainable. And truth be told, maybe I could have moved out a year, maybe two before. Um, But I wasn't, you know, I could have probably gone into it like an efficiency or something, yeah. you know, a small place. But I only moved out with a couple, a couple things in place. One, I just did not have enough, any more space in my parents' house for my equipment. It's a good problem to have, right? Yeah. But two, I had a cl one client on retainer. There's that safety net that That's we talked nice. about earlier, right? Yeah. I had one client on retainer at, uh, what was it? I think it was at the time, like 4000 a month, right? Whoa, that's a big retainer. Yeah. So I had one client, one good client on retainer. So I moved out knowing, okay, I know that I'll have this money monthly within a year. They canceled that contract. I freaked out because to me, I had that safety net. Wow. That was my safety net, right? Yes. That's but tough. then when I got to take, and again, I was having fun, bought everything I needed because I knew I had that safety net. I based all of my expenses on those $4,000 a month. I freaked out. Thank God I had my pastors there and everything and slash business uh, mentors and stuff. Yeah. I called them all. I'm like, hey, this just happened. What do I do? And they're like, relax. First of all, calm down. Um, then I took another look at my numbers. I make more on my own. Mm. So the only thing that changed is that I was really paying attention to my numbers because I really didn't, knowing that I had that coming in every single month. Yeah. But now it's like now you really have to pay attention to your expenses, what you're spending and all that stuff. So, um, But again, keep pushing forward. Keep pushing forward, knowing that, man, when you have that fire under your butt, you know, yes. that you have to make ends meet, you got to do it. Yeah. You're going to make it work somehow, right? 
but then it helps that you have the passion for it. It helps that you love it. It helps mm -hmm. that you have all that going for you, you know? Uh, but it's, I liked what you said, the priorities and your responsibilities. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's super important. So I had a friend who was an independent mm -hmm. um, filmmaker and because of his responsibility to his family, he had to leave it. He had to, because he just wasn't bringing in what he needed. Sorry. Um, what huh? family? Was it a wife and kids or was it wife his and parents? Kid. Sorry. Because so, some people try to help support their parents. That's different. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That, So that's he had a responsibility to, to his wife and, and, okay. and, and, two, and two kids. Okay. And it just, and, uh, you know, it just wasn't. It's not, it's it not just in the wasn't, cards. It just wasn't working out. Right. And so I had to get a job. I had to kind of give that up, you know. Sure. Um, maybe one day he'll come back to it. Um, but he's right. still in the same industry. So he still gets some of that passion. Doesn't mean it's impossible. Mm -hmm. It just means that for the time being, you need to have that full time job, mm -hmm. right? Could be temporary. The hustle is going to be harder because yeah, you have a wife, you have kids that you have to spend time with. You have a full time job, and you need to work your full time your 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 part time hustle mm -hmm. on the side. Mm -hmm. How do you I, manage that? I also think, to be honest, this uh -huh. is my personal opinion. I think that everyone with a full time job or part time job that that's your main source of income should be looking for a side hustle. Hmm. To create some independency for yourself, I always, I've always tried to turn people in a direction to start your own business. Yeah, me too. not even in video, but mm -hmm. like, yeah, totally, just something everything. else. It's been the most liberating thing for me. I've never had a job longer than a year ever in my life. Wow, I'm not a fan of, um, I'm not a fan of uh, routine. <laughs> So anytime I have to come to the same place and do the same thing, even when I worked at the creative agency, my last job. I was doing video work. I was working with the red, but it became very routine, mm -hmm. you know, and it wasn't mine. It wasn't mine. Yeah. It, it, it's so funny when I say I'm not a fan of routine, my fiance gets nervous. <laughs> uh, she's thinking commitment issues. <laughs> so I was like, obviously it doesn't apply there, but, um, well, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it just, I, I, the, my interest in working at a certain place after X amount of, uh, months, I would say, because I haven't, again, I haven't been at a job longer than a year. Um, it just goes down and I'm just not interested in that anymore. And it, while I was at the agency, I was doing that on my side. It was my side hustle, yeah. you know, yeah. until I outgrew the agency in, in terms of like what they can give me versus what I've gotten for myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my, my 2020 season where it was, it was a complete shake up for the yeah. whole the whole world and every industry almost um i got the opportunity of being the right place right time yeah. of being the lead editor for orange theory fitness now nice. with that whole movement of them with a premium membership and having closed down physical brick and mortar um gyms they had to figure out a solution so we had to come up with um we'd rent a studio and we would shoot at work uh, at home workouts mm. and then i would be in charge of editing it and then eventually develop a team and then now it's moved past me and um for the entire, practically the entire year, that's what I did. Everything at one point, at the very beginning, because we were trying to play catch up, I was working seven days a week from home editing. Seven days a week, I was killing myself. The money was fantastic, but I was killing myself. Um, eventually, it became it was a five day a week thing for pretty much like nine months. Great gig, financially opened up all sorts of doors and everything. Got all sorts of new equipment, all those sorts of great things. But the monotony of the same thing every single day there was a there was a part of me that enjoyed the i know i could get this done i don't have to really think too hard about this um it just takes time mm -hmm. um but man right towards that last season that last month i was just dying to do something different because imagine nine months of the same yeah the same project over and over for me i i just don't think i can do it man. as a permanent full-time job you know yeah no, it's it, it's rough, but then you have to you have to consider what's on the line. Like if you have a wife and kids, that's different. And that you know? that gig came at the absolute perfect time when things were so rough in the world. Yeah. I didn't get I only got one call in those yeah. like, I think like eight months since March that everything yeah. had happened um, to shoot something. Um, so it was it was God given, or at least I was in the and, right place. And I want to I, I kind of want to mention something that I just thought about this. We've been saying wife and kids. If you're a woman that wants to get into the industry and you really want to be a freelancer, that's great. If the income for your family is not solely dependent on you, yeah. If your husband's providing whatever it is, mm -hmm. great, go for it. I, yeah. I would always say that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, so that's yeah. I, I noticed we kept saying wife and yeah, kids. Yeah, because we're just speaking to our right. Situation. We're, we're talking about ourselves, but. Anyways, uh, that's what I would say. So, yeah, I mean, look, 
when you're assessing your own self and as to whether or not you should continue on in this path, just know that there has to be some improvement. There has to be. Yes. If you're still at the same place, making the same money uh, as you were before. And you know what? Some people are stagnant. Some people are happy with that. Yeah, that's not an issue. I feel like if it's not, if it can't sustain you, I think it that's where the issue is. to be able to sustain you. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's a hobby, mm-hmm. you know, that's or a, a waste point. of time. You know, Grandpa's speaking now. That's Come wisdom. On. Come on now. Preach. No, it, it has to because <laughs> you have to grow up and make a living and, yeah. and support a family at some point, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, and it has to get better. There was a point where I started uh, and I, I, there's always been this cloud around me with certain people in my life that had concerns about my being able to provide for a wife and kids. Mm-hmm. When I started my business in 2013, that grew even bigger. Yeah. Wow. Cause at the time I was a security officer. I was a security guard when I started my business, mm. I would work overnight shifts and in my security car, I'd be editing. Oh. You know what I mean? So <laughs> That's awesome. It's crazy, but it's hard to at the time I was 24 years old, how can I give them confidence that I it's something that I started, but listen, I got the blessing from my pastor. It's like, listen, I'm trusting. I don't know what's going to happen, right? So, it it's been such an amazing ride, an amazing ride um to to be able to and you know, I've had my own doubts. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. I've had my own doubts, but I've, it's, I see improvement every year, every single year I've seen improvement. Thank God. And, uh, you know, I I guess I'm dreading the year that I see a decline from one year to the next. I haven't Mm -hmm. seen that yet. Mm -hmm. You always want to improve. In my opinion, you should always want to improve. My biggest suggestion is to know your numbers, Mm -hmm. know your numbers, know what you made last year. I wouldn't even go quarterly. How much did you make the first quarter this year as opposed to the first quarter last year? Mm -hmm. And go by that, you know, compare. You're in competition with yourself, not Mm -hmm. with other people. Don't compare yourself to other people. That is huge, huge. Yeah. So I've I've been at fault for that, especially in the first portion, just comparing it to everyone. It's like, I don't have this. Stop comparing yourself. As long as you're going forward and not backward, Mm -hmm. that's the only thing you need Mm -hmm. because it's it's not going to be overnight. It really isn't. It's going to take time. Um, And you're not going to see it maybe in two years or three years or four years. Mm -hmm. You should definitely start seeing it. Year five. Five, six, seven, eight. And that's not set in stone. You could very well see it in two to three years. If you're a savant in this stuff and you learn it significantly faster, if you know all the avenues, it does take time to build relationships and build clientele. Like I said, I still have a client that's from year one, right? So Incredible. again, uh, that's that's how you would do a self-assessment in my mm-hmm. opinion. So it's great, man. <clears throat> Anyways, this was a phenomenal episode. Great. I think I we got it. to share a lot so, more than I wanna, what I expected. I want to listen to it again. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Well, thank you guys for watching this episode. My name is Ariel Martinez. Mike Hernandez, Big Sorry. Harry Magic Mike. <laughs> Handles connections are down below on the show notes for this episode you can also follow the podcast on instagram at ifilmmaker podcast or on our website at ifilmmakerpodcast.com you can check out all our episodes there if you're liking it stop by drop us a comment let us know how we're doing and we thank you guys for tuning in until next time we'll see you on the next episode